Hey guys, before we even start the video, I want to say happy holidays to all who celebrate, and I hope to see you in the new year. Hopefully, I will have better content and I'll have a more reliable schedule. But, thanks anyways. So if you watched my setup tour that I made a couple of weeks ago, you would know that I had a Dell Optiflex running as a NAS, or Network Attached Storage, in my closet. And I will say it was good and decent, and I think that's a really good budget way to have a NAS in your house. However, I thought it was time for an upgrade. This is my new NAS file server, and I'm going to explain to you guys how I did it, why I chose these parts, and how you guys can do it. Let's get into it. So first off, as a disclaimer, a lot of these parts I already had, so they're not going to be the best price to performance. However, I will offer some suggestions so that you guys can build your own at home. So first off, I have the Ryzen 5 3600. This back in its day was a really good mid-range processor for gaming builds. And to be honest, I was on sale, so I just picked it up. However, I didn't do my research and I forgot it doesn't have an integrated graphics chip, so it will need a graphics card to display an output. This is something that you're going to want to avoid, especially if you're using this file server in, you know, somewhere where you don't have a monitor. So what I would recommend instead is the Ryzen 3 3200G. This is also based on what motherboard you have. Based on what motherboard I have, which was uh, an AMD based board, you can get something older, something cheaper, but generally speaking, if you're running a basic server, you can get an i3 or a Ryzen 3, and you should be able to call it an A. Next up, we have the motherboard, and I have the Asus Prime B450A, which is a good motherboard, and it does what I need in this circumstance, which is turn on. <laughs> Um, some things you want to look for is a motherboard with a lot of SATA ports because that's how you're going to be connecting your drives. This motherboard has six, which is good enough for me. Sometimes if you have a little bit more money, you can get a better motherboard with better features, such as more PCIe lanes and more SATA ports. And more SATA spots means more drives. Some have even more M.2 slots, which allow you to have even more drives, which can be good in some cases. But in my case, I just have one M.2 slot, six SATA slots, and three PCIe slots, which works in my case. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, generally speaking, if you want to save some money, you should get a micro ATX board, and as long as it runs, the whatever processor you're running, it should be good. Next up, I have 16 gigs of RAM. Um, I probably could have gotten away with 8 because it's just going to be a NAS, but I went for the 16 because it was on sale. Um, I'm pretty sure the speed doesn't matter in terms of a file server wise, but generally speaking with Ryzen processors, you're going to want a faster memory. And in case of a file server, you would prefer to get ECC memory. This is something that you would have to also make sure your motherboard supports. I'm pretty sure my budget motherboard doesn't support ECC, so I just skipped that step and just got a DDR4 kit and 16 gigs of memory. Next up is the drives. So the amount of drives that you're going to have depends on how much money you want to spend. However, in my case, I had a lot of these drives lying around, so why not toss them in there? So previously, I had a 4TB NAS drive, a 4TB regular drive, and a 1.5TB drive. To be honest, they were just sitting in my closet, so I just hucked them into my case. Ideally, you're going to want to make sure that all your drives are NAS certified drives, meaning that they are suited for longer run times, aka 24-7, 365, versus a regular hard drive, which is only supposed to be on when you need it. Also, if you're building this from scratch, you might want to look into RAID, which is when you have all the drives of the same size and the same manufacturer, and then you can do some cool things like double the speeds or having redundancy for backup purposes. In my case, I just had a bunch of drives lying around, so I can't really do too much with RAID. <laughs> I also had a SATA-based SSD just as a boot drive, 128 gigs, because we're not booting off of hard drives, 
this is 2022 and I don't think anyone should be booting off a hard drive ever. But especially with how cheap SSDs are, you can just grab one, a 128 drive, and toss it into any PC and it will instantly boost the performance. Next up is case, and this is especially important because if you buy a case that can't hold all your drives, you are going to have a bunch of drives on your desk and that can damage them, which would cause you to lose data, and we are trying to avoid that here. So literally, this is how I chose my case. I went on to PC Power Picker, I went to the case section, and I said, hey, I need to hold four drives. What cases can support four drives and show me all the prices? So I had it sort by prices and I went from the cheapest to the most expensive. And that's where I found the Cooler Master NR600. It can hold four 3.5 inch drives and five 2.5 inch drives. So this basically covered all my needs. Ideally, most people will rack mount their NASes and put them in a server chassis, but I thought it might be cooler to put it in a gaming PC chassis so I can have it on my desk and also have it as an extra PC that someone can use if they wanted to game on it. The good thing is, if I wanted to switch to a server chassis later down the line, I can get all my parts and just toss them in the server chassis and call it a day. But for now, I'm going to have it on my desk and maybe even set up some other cool features. Next up, we have the graphics card. Because I had a Ryzen 5 3600, I needed a graphics card and I had an extra one on my PC. Pretty simple, just took it out of my PC and put it in this PC. Makes sense. There is an added benefit though. For an application that I have called Plex, they can use your graphics card for transcoding, for faster and smoother streams, so a 360 will be really nice. It is very overkill, but maybe a nice to have. We'll see how it goes. Finally, we have the power supply. Basically, you can go for the minimum rated power supply, maybe a 500 watt or 600 watt power supply, because you're not gonna be using it for gaming or mining or anything crazy. But in my house, I had a 750 watt power supply, so that's what I threw in there. Now that we went over the parts, we can get into the build. I'm not going to explain how to build a PC, because I feel like there's a million people that do it way better than I will. But you can enjoy this montage of me building my PC. Thank you.
Now that we're done with the actual physical NAS build, we're gonna get into the setup. So there's a million ways that you can share folders over your network, but I'm just gonna show you how to do it over Windows because that's how I did it. So first you're gonna to wanna to image the PC to have Windows 10, Windows 11, whatever operating system you want. Then you're gonna to wanna to make sure you mount all your drives to make sure they're on your PC and they're installed correctly. After your drives are good, you're gonna to wanna to make a shared user account between all of your PCs so that you can share the network securely and safely. So in my case, I set up this shared account so that whenever you wanna access this drive, you just log in with this credentials. Next up, you're gonna right click the drive you wanna share and share with this user that you just created. Boom. Then you're gonna log in on any PC search for this computer's name and it will prompt you for a login you use your shared login and boom you have access to anything that's on that drive so ideally then you can just toss your pc into a corner and as long as it has network your nas is good that gives you a space to back up your stuff and nothing will ever touch it because it's going to be isolated with like no no one touching it pretty much like as long as no one touches it don't quote me on that Finally, you're going to want to set up some features so that you can access your NAS from mobile devices. And one of those features is called SMB Share. This is really easy to install. All you have to do is go to Windows Features, scroll down to SMB, and enable it. Then you're going to want to find the IP address of your machine and enter it on your phone with the credentials that you've created. And boom, you can access your network attached storage from your phone. This works for tablets, this should work for Android, and you should be good to go. So this is a really easy way to set up your NAS. However, there are a couple things you want to look out for in the future. One thing that I don't have on my server is RAID. And RAID is a good way to either double your speeds of your drives, create redundancy so if that one drive fails, you have a backup. Or even sometimes if you have enough drives, you can do both of them at the same time. So my case only supports four hard drives and all of mine are different sizes which makes it difficult to have RAID. But if you're building a NAS from scratch, you're gonna to wanna to do your research to make sure you get the right type of RAID for whatever configuration you're running. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope it really helped set up your NAS server, even though I didn't really need it because each of my PCs have two hard drives in them, both one terabyte or two terabytes. Don't, don't, don't even like fight me on that. But yeah, I really hope to see you guys in the new year and happy holidays.